Hi, welcome to my studio. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to attach a piece of paper to a cradle panel. And the first thing I'm going to start off with is the material list. So one thing that you will need is to have a cradle panel, or else it doesn't have to be a cradle panel, just a panel. This is an example of what a cradle panel actually looks like. And this is called a gallery style because of the thickness of it. The gallery style means that typically it does not need to be placed into a frame to go into a gallery. And I'm just going to move the lens back slightly there. I think you can see that a little better. So it means that it has the wider edge here so it does not have to be a framed. And when it says it's a cradle panel, then it has the depth in the back. And basically, because the back is very nicely finished as well, if you wanted to, you could turn this into a shadow box. And the front of it is a nice, uh, usually it's a birch panel, but this one already has a piece of paper attached to it. So um, you want to start off with a cradle panel or any kind of a panel. You'll want to have a pencil, You'll want to have a razor blade or an X-Acto knife, although I am not very good with an X-Acto knife. Uh, you might want to have a brayer or something where you can roll your paper to make sure there are no bubbles. Um, if you want to protect the edges like I usually do, then I use tape. It doesn't matter if it's uh, regular masking tape. I usually use this tape. Um, it removes easily and I don't have any problems with it. So this I use for the smaller cradle panels and this is what I use for the, can the gallery size type of cradle panel. Um, you want to use, if you want to use gesso, and this would be totally your call on it, to put a light layer of gesso on the panel before you start applying the paper. Um, in the long run, I do not see any advantage of using a gesso or not. The only thing I see with it is the gesso acts like a primer and so your your material or your gels or your glue does not soak into the raw wood quite as much if you use a layer of gesso. The one I will be working on today I've applied a thin layer of gesso so just so you can see how that looks with it as well. You'll want to have paper towels. Um, and then something that I also use is I use this little wedge and that is depending on the size of panel that you're actually working on but the wedge will just help to kind of straighten out the gel as you're applying it or else you could use a squeegee. Now this squeegee is actually a scotch bright which you can buy in any of the shops with the uh, cleaning supplies and basically it would be used to clean your bathtub or anything like that but I consider this to be a lot more fun to use it in the studio therefore it's a studio tool. So that's available for you to use or it's suggested for you to use. You might also want to have a little spray bottle. Um, this is just filled with water so if your gel or your medium is starting to dry while you're applying it just give your surface a little spray and you're set to go. You will want to use a ruler to tear your paper. Um, you might want to use a palette knife. Again, it depends on the size of the panel that you're using. And you'll want to have uh, your water container. And this is a not so precious brush. And because the gel is going to get into your brush and um, you probably will want to use a brush at some point in that, even with the palette knife. But it's not to worry because the gel does wash out very nicely with just soap and water. And I happen to uh, typically use Dawn dish detergent to look after that. And then for the glue, uh, what I like to use is... Um, if I'm using a heavy paper, I like to use a heavy gel. If I'm using a lightweight paper, like 140 pound, or a rice paper, then I do like to use a soft gel. It doesn't matter if it's gloss or 
matte, it doesn't matter at all. And I know some people like to use Elmer's glue. That works just fine too. Okay, something, oh, something else that you would also need is because what I do with my technique is I like to iron my paper onto the panel. Once uh, everything is wet and it's applied, I place the iron on that. And to place the iron on it, I also like to use some parchment paper. So that is the material list. And so we'll get started, but I'll show you something on the cradle panel. And this might give you some ideas too. As you saw this to begin with, this is actually a, a G clay print from a full size painting, which is a 22 by 30. And the print was made on watercolor paper. So um, I only had to trim a very small bit off the painting to apply it to this piece. And then after it was applied, I took Dorland's cold wax and I'll move that up to the camera so that you can see it better. Dorland's cold wax and gave it a few applications. It's a beautiful finish, totally waterproof. I also waxed the edges. So now it would just need to be having a little um, wire on here if you want, unless you're just setting it up somewhere. But the wire here, I like to mount the wire on the inside and then that way when it's hung on the wall, it just looks like it's floating and it's just a beautiful presentation. So I will put that out of the way and I'll show you some other ideas of what I have. Um, cradle panels come in many sizes. It's quite a good selection actually in sizes. This one is made, and when it's finished painting, this one is made to um, fit on a 20 by 20 panel. So that needs to be finished. Then this one is designed to fit on an 18 by 24 panel. And um, the reason I have a few of these is because I painted them as demos in a class. So you can see that I have my pencil markings on here. And that was just so I could see where I wanted to paint on as I'm painting it here that I knew where my guidelines were. But on this side, the back side, I also have pencil markings set here that I know where I'm going to place the panel and I think that shows up as well. Okay, Just to give you an idea of that, I do have some other watercolor paintings that I have framed that I'm going to take out of the frame and mount them to a panel as well. So uh, you can buy the panels in pretty well any art store. Um, sometimes even Michaels will sell them and just make sure you like the panel. They're all good. Okay, so when I actually start to have my paper be prepared for the panel, uh, that's the first thing I'll go over with you, is I look at, and this is 300 pound Arches cold press paper. I look at the paper and I see where the watermark is. And I think you can probably read that right there where it says Arches and Typically with all sheet paper, this is a 22 by 30 sheet, um, there is a watermark on, I would any professional paper will have a watermark. If you can read the watermark, then the manufacturer has deemed that to be, this is the paint, the side that you want to paint on. So we'll call it the right side. Although with most papers, you can paint on both sides. It's not an issue at all. So when it's on the right side, you would turn it over, place the paper down, right side facing down, put your panel on here and decide where you want your panel to be. So I have done that and I have my paper geared down to almost the right size. So you can see here, my little watermark is on that side and I have made my markings. This is my panel. It's a nine by 12 
light coat of gesso. And something that I always like to do is I like to tape the edges because I like to keep the edges clean. And then I have the option of, do I want to um, paint the edges or varnish the edges or just leave them as they are? So that's an option. And then they're clean so I can do whatever I want. But what I do is I take the panel, put it on my paper, you don't need a lot of um, paper on the sides. And then I just take my pencil and just draw around it that I know where I want my panel to be. Now, because this has, it does not have a painting on the other side, it's not that crucial because if it goes on here crooked, etc., it won't really matter because it is still to be finished. But as you saw in my other paintings, that's why I had them on display, that if that is a finished painting, you certainly do not want to apply that so that it's going to be crooked. That would be a lot of work and possibly some tears because once the glue is dry, it's pretty well impossible to remove the glue without tearing the paper and that would mean that your painting would be torn as well. So now we're actually ready to start. Uh, with this, I'm going to just tear this paper down, move that panel out of the way, and I do this for any reduction of paper size, and typically I use a cork back ruler because it gives me uh, a little stability as I tear the paper, and you know this works with 140 pound paper, 300, 400, the tearing is just really effortless when you have a nice ruler like this and tear it towards you. And I always tear on the back. I always put the right side down no matter what I'm tearing the paper for because as you tear it, you're creating a nice little deckled edge. There's no folds in here, it's ready to go. Okay, so now to make sure that my surface is very nice and clean, I'm actually going to um, do an extra little layer of protection. I like to be cautious and it saves a lot of work when uh, you can be cautious like this. And I'm putting my paper on here. This is to protect myself and make sure that I'm not going to have the gel uh, go on the other side of here because watercolors and the gel really doesn't work if you want a transparent painting on the surface. All right, and here is my panel. The gesso is dry. I'm going to use the heavy gel because it is 300 pound paper. You will, might notice that the gel has this plastic in here. I do this with all my lids because I have really um, had too many experiences of almost breaking my hand trying to open the lid because this does act like glue. It isn't necessarily a glue, but it acts like it. So, and you can see the consistency of the gel. I'm going to take the gel and just apply it here with the palette knife. One thing that you do not want on these panels is to actually have texture because even if it has 300 pound paper on the top of it, the texture is going to show through. And if you're painting in transparent watercolor, all you have is water and color. And so you would not want to um, have the texture or the, it would look like a lump on, with the paper. So you really don't want to have that on here. Okay, I have a little extra, so I'll just put it on my paper like so. This is where I use my little wedgie or the, the wedge or use the um, squeegee. And just take this and smooth some of that. Now, if you were happening to use this in mixed media, or an encaustic or a hot wax application on the paper, depending on what you're doing with that too. Having the texture on here 
might be a plus, but when it's watercolor, you don't really want the extra texture. And again, just transferring it over to the paper and I'm going to try to clean up my edges so that I do not get gel all over the place. Now the gel dries clear, but it's still there. So I just want to see, holding it up to the light. Uh, it looks pretty good, although I do have some, ed some areas here where um, the edges are, the edges look like they might be a little dry, so the edges are not covered. So I'm going to take some gel from here, use my brush, and just make sure that the sides and the edges are covered. It's very easy to um, get wrapped up in doing this and then not seeing that the edges are do not have any gel and then the panel can't stick. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the paper and because the paper is quite absorbent, I'm actually going to take my little spray bottle and just mist my paper ever so slightly. Trying not to move it unless I move it with the paper towel because I really don't want the gel on the other side of it. And now I'm going to brush on this gel. And again, lightly going over the pencil lines so I have everything that is wet. Um, and just while we're doing this, there are many uh, art societies in watercolor now that are accepting alternate, um, alternate to framing art that comes in and applying it to a wood panel is very nice. It's lightweight. Um, you don't need glass on here and you can finish this with either using a cold wax, either Gamlin's cold wax or Dorland's. I'm going to put that back because I know my products are clean here. And uh, then you just finish that or else use an MSA varnish, which is a golden spray, Mineral Spirit Archival. And you apply a few coats on that. It makes for just an absolutely beautiful finish. And then you're watercolor painting and none of these items disturb the watercolor. As we know, watercolors never sleep. But these items do not wake up the watercolor and they just make for a beautiful, beautiful finish. I think that just might do it. And I'm going to hold that up with the paper towel and I can see that it should be good except for I see that along this edge I don't have as much it's not as jelly if that's a word to use on here as I would like it to be so applying a little more gel to the edge there everything should be good to go now I'm going to take this make sure that is still wet it's very shiny very wet and actually I'm just going to grab my paper towel here and uh, give those edges a little wipe. I think I was a little over ambitious with the gel on that. It's just the way things go. So now I'm going to place it on here. Follow my guidelines. Perfect, perfect, perfect. As that's on there, I'm pressing down to give it a good bond. While that is being pressed down, I'm going to let that sit for a minute just um, while I plug in my iron, which will only take a second. Everything is right here and that's not going to go anywhere. And 
that iron is pretty well instant heat. So now that is set, I'm going to turn this over again, press it another time, turn it over, and I cannot see any bubbles in there, so that to me is like success. So I'm taking the parchment paper and taking the brayer and from the center out, just giving it a little brayer. And the iron is heating up nicely, I would think. And since I didn't see any bubbles, I don't have to fight with that. Now, when you do a larger piece, and I've done these in 22 by 30, which is a full sheet of paper, um, I will tell you that there is a bit of a problem with controlling those um, bubbles on there, but it is doable. So now I'm picking that up by the paper. It's holding quite nicely. We're good to go. So I'm going to move everything out of the way as the hot iron comes around here. And I'm just going to start to put and the paper feels nice and hot as I go over here. The iron is set at linen and cotton, which is the highest setting because the watercolor itself is 100% rag, it is cotton, it won't hurt it at all. I'm not sure, you might want to test it if you're using silk papers, silk of any kind, or any kind of rice papers that might be a little more fragile. I'd give it a test before um, possibly melting it. So far I haven't burnt anything, and I'd like to keep it that way, so I hope this isn't the first time. But, um, it just works like a charm. I think a few years ago I read in a magazine about ironing on your paper and I just thought, wow, that's a fantastic idea. First of all, usually, um, I know from example, if you're ready to start painting and you want to paint on a panel and you do want to paint on paper with the panel, you don't want to wait a few hours for it to dry. You want instant availability. That's my nature, and I know I'm not the only one. Uh, but what you could do, if you don't want to iron this, when the paper is turned over, once you apply the panel to it, you could put some heavy books on it or your products, anything that has any kind of weight. Just place it on top of it, let it sit. Overnight is the best thing to do, and it'll dry, and it should be flat as a board. So. That works too. And it's kind of nice to have a few pieces ready to go uh, in storage so you can plan your artwork that way. Okay, everything looks really good with this. So, um, and I've just given this a minute or so to just cool down a little bit. This is where the razor blade comes into place and with the razor blade you just want to make sure that there's no glue or anything from the last time and in theory we are just slicing off the edge of this now uh, if you find that part a little difficult something i didn't mention before but if it's easier for you you could just take the scissors and just notch that and I find that the most difficult part is actually just cutting into it and doing the first cut. So I'll do that on one here but just show you the whole process on this. And this is actually where you could use an X-Acto knife as well. And if you use the X-Acto knife, then you would want to have this laying flat on your table, take the X-Acto knife, and just slice it here along the edge. Now, as I mentioned a little earlier, X-Acto knives and I do not really get along because every one I've done with an X-Acto knife, um, I kind of gouge into the wood and it takes a lot of work to use sandpaper to sand that out. So I am sticking with my razor blade. Okay. So uh, I want to make sure that this is being visible on the camera 
because once you get your, your cut in here, which I just did with that, I just sliced off a little part of it, I'm securing this. And uh, once you get your cut in, you put the razor blade in, and hopefully the camera is showing this, put the razor blade in and just follow, follow the edge of the panel. As you can see, I am not actually seeing where I am cutting it, except for I'm going to take a little look like this. And once your cut is in there straight, your blade is in there, you, all you need to do is just follow the edge of the panel and it goes pretty straight. If there's any little adjustments to be made, that's pretty easy to do. Okay, so we're going to go through and uh, show you on this. And I know I cut that a little crooked. So as you can see, I might as well fix it now. You can see there that that has a bit of a edge on it. That would not look nice whether you frame it or not. Even the frame won't hide that. So I'm basically just taking the blade to where it went off the rails, so to speak, and just trimming it. I'm going to hold, use my chin as a support, and just slice that. I'll come back to that. It still needs to be straightened a bit. Um, now we'll go to slice this one and clean the blade. Make sure that you can see that. And just for the record, I have never cut myself. So you can breathe not it's not really very difficult just make sure your blade is nice and sharp beautiful okay now this is the one where I put the notch and I put the notch on the wrong side so I'm going to notch it here and see to show you if that makes it a little easier there we go so now that has the notch, we'll turn that over. The panel faces me, or the paper side of the panel faces me. And you can see now that I have the blade in the notch. And if I'm, use, if I'm doing this on a larger panel, I usually put the panel on another surface so that it's a, it's a little lower, it gives you a little more leverage, but the camera will not pick it up from there. Okay, so let's just get into the groove here. I usually don't notch them to begin with, but get into the groove, follow the panel, and away it goes. Now I still have this little edge here that's not as even as it should be and you can see it here in the camera. You can actually see that there's a little bit of an edge to it. So we better just trim that. There we go. And I'd like to present to you your paper applied to a cradle panel and I would say that that is perfect checking the edges there's a little tag there I can just tear off uh, the edges are all nice and straight the or the edges are all nice and tight now if you wanted to take the uh, blue tape off at this stage you could and you can see how nice and clean the edges are and uh, but I prefer to leave the tape on until I actually have painted on here so that is now 
your paper attached to a cradle panel and it's ready for any artwork that you want to do. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for joining me.